The more I find out about what happened in Bendigo, the more insane it gets. You see, the Muslims of a little town called Bendigo in Australia wanted to build a masjid and they applied for permission to do that. They were met with huge resistance. People who hate Islam came in from outside Bendigo just to protest against the building of this masjid. The protest started to get so big and got so much media coverage and had so much momentum that haters even flew in from other countries just to join in the hate fest and try to stop this masjid from being built. Now, they were met with resistance from the local non-Muslims who welcomed the masjid in their community. They said, let the Muslims build their space. Everyone is welcome here. Bendigo turned into an epic contest, like something out of Lord of the Rings, with everyone taking sides and bringing in reinforcements. After a very long legal battle and many court cases, it kept getting escalated and escalated until it reached the highest court in the entire country all to decide whether or not the little town of Bendigo was going to be allowed to build a masjid. The court eventually ruled, yes, Bendigo could build their masjid. So I've been to Bendigo. I met the people. I saw the land, the building. I spent hours asking questions to the Muslims, the non-Muslims, the reverts. And the more I heard, the more I was in disbelief. So first off, let me tell you about Margot. My name is Margot Spalding and I've been involved with the Muslim community in Bendigo since 2015, mm -hmm. when the permit and approval for a mosque to be built in Bendigo was challenged by some really unpleasant and dangerous people uh, who held rallies and there was great violence and I believe it was really wrong and it was horrifying and so I founded an organisation or a movement called Believe in Bendigo which was moved really quickly and thousands of really good people in Bendigo came on board in support of the Muslim community. She's very modest. She talks about how it was a big team effort, but this lady almost single-handedly turned the tide in Bendigo to show so much support for Muslims and so much support for the mosque that she really changed the entire outcome of the situation by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, by all accounts, this woman is an absolute hero. I was really sad also because I thought the Muslim people were fearful, you know, like nervous of all these people who were so obviously um, aggressive and ugly and so this was a great way of demonstrating to the Muslim community you know all these thousands of people have come out to support you and we are all very happy that you're going to be building a mosque in Bendigo and I wish it would hurry up <laughs> next up is this young man Cameron now he's only 18 and he's been Muslim for three years <laughs> you can speak to me yeah yeah sure I think Yanni with the um, okay. Wait, did you say Yanni? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Go to He's definitely Muslim. <laughs> but the problem with Cameron is that he lives in a city where there is no masjid. Whenever he wants to pray, he has to pray at a hired hall or in somebody's house or outdoors somewhere, but there's no masjid. And I actually asked him the question, how would you feel? How would it affect you if there was a masjid built in Bendigo? And this is what he had to say. I feel like at the moment now, it feels like there's nothing there, there's nothing to legitimize my faith, sort of, you know what I mean? So if there was a beacon in the community, it would just give me that sort of space to be like, yeah, I'm going to go pray, but I'm not going to the university, I'm going to a mosque, you know? I don't have to go to some community uh, center that we've hired from the council, I'm going to the mosque for halakha, you know? It's incredible that in such a remote place like Bendigo, where there's not many Muslims, Cameron found his way to Islam, but he really needs to be able to go somewhere to make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to pray Jum'ah in an actual masjid, to have taraweeh in a masjid, to have Eid in a masjid. And he needs to have that missing component of his Islamic identity fulfilled. So the next person that had a major impact on this project is a man by the name of Ian. Now he's actually an Australian Buddhist and he's building on his own land, a huge Buddhist temple in Bendigo. But his part to play in this was actually pretty exceptional. He managed to gather all of the faith leaders in Bendigo. That includes Christians, Jewish leaders, Hindus, Buddhists. And he said, if the Muslims are facing this kind of hate, then maybe sometime in the future, one of us will also face this kind of hate. And so it's up to us to really work together to say we can't take anything for granted any longer. We have to support each other and that's exactly what the Benigo Interfaith Council is about. And in regard to the, the, the mosque, it's something where the Interfaith Council continually gets behind supporting it and, and holding it. Now, the exceptional thing about this is that this multicultural council did not exist before the Bendigo protests. 
before the haters and the Nazis and the bigots and, and the Islamophobes came and protested and said, we don't want a masjid in Bendigo, there was no intercultural council, there was no multi-faith council. But now, as a result of this hatred, this multi-faith council exists and they all work together, communicate together, have dialogue, have events together. That's another incredible, beautiful thing that has come out of basically hatred being turned into a good and positive result for everyone who lives in Bendigo, the Muslims and the non-Muslims. And that's a miracle, if you ask me. One of the most amazing things that I came across in my interviews in Bendigo is there was actually a time where a Christian church offered for the Muslims to come and do Jummah prayer inside the church as a show of solidarity and hospitality. Now the Muslims, of course, they said that's a lovely offer, thank you so much, but we can't pray in the church because there are so many statues everywhere. So the Christians actually said, we're gonna get tarps and we're gonna get blankets and we're gonna cover all of the statues for you so that you can come in and pray in there. Now this is actually something even the companions did when Omar al-Khattab entered into Jerusalem, he was about to pray inside a church. The only thing that stopped him was, he said, I don't want my followers after me to come and, and take over your church and make it into a mosque. So he prayed outside. But the idea of praying inside a church is not new and it's something that's been done historically. So the Muslims agreed because the, the uh, offer was so earnest and so genuine. They were about to enter the church to pray in there, but there was a line of racists that made a human wall and said, no, we won't let you come into the church. We won't let you pray your Muslim prayers inside our church. Now, what happened next was incredible. A group of Christians actually came out to the Muslims and said, we're going to surround you. We're gonna form a human shield around you and we're gonna walk you into the church through these racists so you can pray in there. And they walked through the races surrounded by Christians and were led in there to pray. All of these things that are happening in Bendigo, this story deserves to be known and deserves to be told. It's an, it's an incredible example of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give triumph and can give victory through any means that he chooses. I think ultimately because of having had this terrible time in 2015 and 16, I actually think Bendigo has been advantaged by that and the Muslim community also, because what I think from my observation and I hope is that the Muslim community actually feels stronger than it ever would have had we not have, and obviously everyone would prefer not to have had happen what happened. It was just simply so horrible. But because it did and it was overcome, you know, it's the real good overcoming evil thing. And so good is stronger. So the Muslim community in Bendigo is stronger, I believe, and also is regarded more highly than it would have been had nothing ever happened, mm. which would be a, a great annoyance to the UPF and their cohort. The masjid right now looks so close to finished. It looks like you could just put some carpet in there and it will be ready for the Muslims to come in and worship. They just need our help to get over the line. They just need that last little bit of support so we can finally write the final chapter of this novel and have the victory, the win of Islam in Bendigo available for all time for every Muslim and non-Muslim to see it as an example of how different faiths, different cultures can live and work together harmoniously and to allow da'wah to happen so that people like Cameron can find their way to Islam and have a place to pray.